Hello, welcome to the third episode of Rocks in a Box. And this episode is going to be a little bit different because my daughter requested I do something for her. Uh, as you can see, these are not tumbled stones that fit in a box. Um, a few of them fit in a box, so I guess it counts. But she requested that I do something for her science classes that she's teaching. Uh, so I want to say hello to Mrs. Nimberg's seventh grade class at St. Pat's School. Uh, this is for you guys and anybody else who wants to watch it. So let's get started. Uh, this first one here is a huge fossil that I found on the property of the school that I teach at. So this is in my wife's science classroom. Uh, it is called, I'm cheating and looking at a note down here, uh, Cylindrophyllum Heinshawi. Uh, and it was uh, named after Henry Heinshaw, uh, who lived here in Alpena. He's actually from uh, England originally, but he lived here in Alpena and kind of figured out that limestone was worth something. And he found the first one of these. Uh, the one they kind of use as an example for all the other ones. So uh, it's called Cylindrophyllum. You can see that there's cylinders here, so got named after that. Pretty cool, huge uh, coral colony. Um, it's neat. I, I don't think I've ever found one like this. Uh, like I said, I just found this uh, about five minutes away from here by foot, if you're walking slow, uh, right in the school property where I teach. So I'm going to move this one and come back in a second. And back. Uh, let's take care of a couple of these other big ones here. Uh, this is called Conodolomite and this is from Marquette, Michigan. Uh, this is the only fossil I'm going to show you today that isn't from this immediate area right here around Alpena. Um, this is a stromatolite which I believe is the oldest living thing on the earth. Uh, it's 2.2 billion years old and it looks a lot better if it's wet so I'll squirt it here for you. Brings out the color a little bit better. This isn't a real pretty piece. Uh, sometimes it's very pink. This one's just sort of a, a peach color. Um, but I have one that I polished up here that really shows a lot better. So this would have been sitting this way, or possibly this way. But you can see the layers where it would have laid down in the bottom of a, an ocean or something. So um, it's got some quartz in here. I believe that's quartz. Uh, different different colors, so you got kind of this color is kind of like that. And the part I like is this pink stuff. I make things like this little heart out of the pink stuff. Um, this is a little necklace that I made for my wife. And it's made out of this rock right here. So it starts out looking kind of like that, and then I make it look like this. All right, next, we've got a stromatoporoid, which is related to a sponge. So when I saw this here in Alpena, I thought at first that it was a, an agate. Um, it looks like a Lake Superior agate, to me at least. Uh, the, the, the texture of it here, these little pits all over it. And I picked it up, um, knowing that we shouldn't have agates here. And I could see it wasn't an agate right away. It's got all these layers. Uh, really kind of a cool fossil. And I've never found another one like it. That's a one of a kind for me. So stromatolite, stromatoporoid, different. Uh, next let's take a look at this one. Uh, this is called hexagonaria, uh, otherwise known as a Petoskey stone. I picked this one up today. So this is a 350, 360 year old, something like that, 360 million year old uh, coral fossil. So that's what it looks like when you pick it up. And after you polish it up, uh, let's see, here's a good one. It looks like this. So there's the front. And then when you flip it over, the back looks like that. This is one of my favorite rocks to pick up. If you watch my channel at all, you already know that. This is the one I did a video on polishing. You can see the back isn't polished. I did that one by hand with sandpaper. All right, this one, uh, I'm not 100% sure of, but I think it's, and I'm cheating here, Syringopora or Syringopora, something like that. And I'm hoping that I can treat this one with acid and take away all the inside or the, the matrix here and just leave the coral behind. 
And what I'm hoping it looks like is when I've done that with this fossil, which is called Halocytes or chain coral. And if you look really close, uh, these look like little chains along here. So I took fossils like that and soaked it in acid and it takes away all the, the, the gray part and kind of leaves the white part. I think that's really, really cool. I have a video about that too if you want to see that video. All right, what's next? Uh, I think I'm going to move the camera closer and show you the rest of these up a little bit closer. So give me a second and I'll move the camera. Before I go on to any new fossils, I thought I'd show you this just a little closer. That's the chain coral, Halocytes. And here it is after you treat it with acid. Isn't that cool? Okay, let's look at a gastropod, otherwise known as a snail. That's one I found. But my wife outdid me and found this one. It's huge. This stays in her classroom and its name is Gary. Here we have Cladopora. It's another coral fossil. That's what it looks like when you find it. And then if you polish it up, it looks like this. This is one I polished on a flat lap. Just want to show you how they look different when they're wet. See the dark that comes out on that? These smell like oil when you cut them or grind on them. So I think there's oil in that black part there. Okay, what else do we have here? Let's look at this one before I forget to show it to you. This is sometimes called a death plate. So that's like little stuff that's fallen down onto the ocean floor and then over years just piled up more and more and more of it. And it's a bunch of little critters and stuff down there. Um, a lot of these are crinoid stems. That's a crinoid stem right there. A crinoid is actually an animal, looks kind of like a plant, kind of looks like a flower. There's a big stem. Let me see if I can find one for you here. There's a stem that looks like that, or that. And then at the top, it looks like a flower, but it's actually not a flower, it's actually alive. So this is the top part. It's called the calyx. Here's another one. Bigger one. Doesn't look like much on the back. And I think I have another little piece here somewhere. There's a piece, two pieces. I believe that's a calyx also. That looks like the stem, maybe a bigger stem coming up. By the way, I'm not an expert on any of this stuff, so I could be wrong on some of these things. Here's another calyx. Oh, here's one. Sometimes, not the ones I showed you, but sometimes they have these geometric patterns on them that are really cool. All right, what's next? How about a bryozoa? So, uh, my son-in-law, Mr. Nimberg, uh, just showed me, or told me, that there's three different kinds of bryozoa, and I have two of them here. Uh, so, he said you can tell it's a bryozoa because they've got these little pinholes in them. Hopefully that's showing up okay. You can see they both have the little pinholes in them. So this is a branching bryozoa, and I think he called this a frilly bryozoa. Um, they, they grow on like a spiral stem, and this stuff comes out like a little fan all the way around. It spirals up. Looks pretty cool when you see a whole picture of one. 
All right, another thing I find a lot of around here are brachiopods. And these are just sort of like little seashells. It's a different kind. There are a bunch of different kinds of these around here. Sometimes they're hollowed right out. Here's a couple more. Those are fun to find. Lots of those around here. Those are easy to find around here. Uh, then we have sea urchin spines. These are sea urchin spines. Kind of fun. There's a couple more little brachiopods. Now this one I thought was hollowed out, uh, but Mr. Nimberg showed me that there's a hinge right there. And that's actually not hollowed out. It's concave on this side, but that's the other shell. It's not the inside of this shell. And I always thought it was until he told me otherwise. Okay, next let's take a look at this. Uh, I believe this is Favocytes, or Favocytes, which is another coral. I know these are. These are polished up. Oops. These are also called Charlevoix stone. So we've got Petoskey stone, which is named after an Indian chief, and there's a town on Lake Michigan called Petoskey, which is named after the same Indian chief. And Charlevoix, which is not named after an Indian chief, I think that's a French word, uh, but it's just down the road. So I guess they felt like they didn't have their own fossil, so somebody named it Charlevoix stone. But Favocytes is the the scientific name for it. Here's some more crinoid stems that I didn't show you before. So this is a crinoid stem. Kind of like the ones I showed you before. But at Rockport, this is a different, this is about, I don't know, 20 minutes away. I found this one place, this another place. But at Rockport they have these little bumps on them, they look like little gears to me. So that's like one disc off of this. So you can see they're all stacked up on there. And then if you unstacked them, you know, it'd be like that. I like the ones with the little, the little gears. And here's one that I only have one of. This is called a blastoid. And I believe it's related to a starfish. See how it has five segments in there? It's pretty broken up. This is all broken in here. But that's pretty cool. This is a big one. Uh, there's other species that are only about that big, maybe a quarter inch long. So blastoid. And these are horn corals. Uh, you might have seen the video where I polished these. And I don't have any rough examples of these. So if you're studying fossils, you probably don't want a polished one, but that's all I have. Oops, almost dropped it on the floor. So, horn coral. And that is it for this week's video. Hopefully you learned something, and I'll see you next week.